name is Andrew Adams, owner of Platinum Contract and Design Build Renovate. We're here at Bolton, Massachusetts, uh, doing a big um, architectural structural remodel on an old historic barn dating back, you know, in the 1700s. Um, we're here with ART Advanced Repair Technology using their FlexTech, which is an, uh, a two-part epoxy that we inject into cracks or we can mold into anything we basically want to restore the structural integrity of the, the beams that we're trying to keep um, as a finished product here. We have over 20,000 square feet of building to cover. It's a multi-step process. Um, kind of how we got involved with it was um, we spec on the original plans from the architect, uh, Kanai Olala. Basically, he was up in the air. I had a rep representative come out from ART to give us a demonstration. Uh, it went, went very well, and basically he sold me on the installation of the product itself. I'd say the biggest difference in, in this product is the application. Everything else is putties and mixes. You can straight inject this through a caulking style gun, uh, and it really it decreases the labor costs throughout the, you know, the course of the project. Um, it is injectable, you can hand mix it, you can tint it, you can paint it. It's just a phenomenal product that we've been using throughout the whole course of the job. And we're on the tail end of it now, where we're going to, in a little bit, give a little demonstration of what's going on. And we're at the point where um, we're just finishing up, and we're just going to give you a little demonstration uh, on how things, are gonna, how things are going and the process of doing it. Okay, so we're here at demonstration time. Uh, this is Dan Burke uh, from Platinum Contracting. We're here to uh, you know, give you an actual demonstration of uh, how we've been going throughout the building using all the different techniques and different uh, application uh, styles to uh, use the FlexTech product. So Dan's gonna uh, run you through the five-step process of how it all works. So Dan, here you go. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so the first step, first thing you would want to do probably is uh, wear some latex gloves so you don't get it all over your hands. Um, you mentioned it's a five step process, so we'll start with step one and step one it will be to actually clean the crack out. So what you want to do is you want to get in there, you want to make sure you get any of the old debris, dust, uh, wood, anything, anything out of there. You basically just want it clean, cleaned out completely before because the cleaner it is the better the product will work. For this, I'm just using a hand tool. You can use um, a router, but um, in this project that we're doing, we want to try and keep the, as much of the rustic um, appearance as possible. Um, once you get your crack completely cleaned out like this, you're going to want to move on to step two, which is uh, I recommend uh, taping it. You want to tape it because you don't want to be getting the um, you don't want to get the primer, especially on any of the other part of the beam or the tint. So. I'm going to begin to tape. You want to get as close to the edges as possible, to the edges of the crack, just so when it's finished, it looks like it's actually naturally part of the beam itself. Alright, so now we're going to do the third step, which is actually priming the crack. Um, ART uses an actual system um, with their primer, and their primer trade is actually a two-part system, part A and part B, which actually penetrates deeper into the fibers and the wood, causing a uh, much, much stronger bond with the epoxy itself. Um, you mix it together, and you, you, you got to make sure that you mix it before you apply it to the actual crack. So now I'm going to apply it. I'm using an actual trial knife to apply it, but you can use brushes, you can use uh, pretty much anything you can get into the crack. When you're applying, you want to get as far back in the crack as possible, as well as both sides of the crack. Um, you, really, you, you really want to do it as quick as possible because it does dry um, rather quickly. So you want to get done with this and on to epoxying it before it dries up because the bonding actually works much much better when um, when the primer is actually still wet. When you're actually done um, applying the primer you want to wait about 10 minutes and um, no more than a half hour 45 minutes so you don't want it to dry up but you do have a, a pretty large 20-25 minute window but you definitely want to wait 10 minutes before applying the, um, the epoxy. Um, so I've got my crack pretty much primed up and I'm ready now to apply the epoxy itself. 
So moving on, Andrew, um, what I've done here is I've actually uh, backfilled the, the crack um, using ART static mixing nozzles, which I've actually used um, on pretty much the whole building, and I've also used here. You can actually screw them right onto the top of the bottle itself. The nozzles actually make it a lot easier to penetrate into, into the, the actual crack itself. Um, I've been using them throughout the project, and I've used it to backfill this hole here. What we're going to show you here, uh, now that I've backfilled this, is how to actually tint the epoxy. ART offers various um, different color tints that help you match, you know, whatever your project color may be. This, what we have, we're using here is a, uh, is a medium pine um, color, and now I'll show you actually how to mix it into the epoxy itself. Once you've picked out your tint, um, you know, you, you, mix your, you mix your epoxy, make sure you have your epoxy mixed up, and you're going uh, to apply just a little bit. It, you can apply more, and it will actually make it darker. It'll still be the same color that you, that you pick to match your project, but, um, but it might be a, a little bit darker. So you just apply a little bit, just like this. You want to cover all the clear epoxy. Um, once you've done that, you then take your, I'm going to use a putty knife, but whatever tool you decide to use, you could use the trials that ART actually provides. You then mix it in completely, like so. You want to make sure all the powder is mixed in. You don't want to see any clear epoxy left, because when you do start the application, that will show up. Um, so, like I said, you just want to make sure it's all mixed in like so. So now when you finish uh, mixing the tint into your epoxy with the uh, color that you think best fits the color of the beam, you're going to want to uh, start the application. You're going to want to use a generous amount. You're going to want to get it as deep into the crack as possible. And then you just follow down with your putty knife or whatever, like I said, whatever tool you choose to use. Once you've finished uh, filling your crack with your tinted epoxy, um, you're going to want to peel the tape off. You're going to want to peel the tape off as soon after you finish. The sooner you take it off, the easier it will come off. If you leave it on there for a while, it tends to dry and it's harder to take the tape off. What do you think about it, Andrew? I think it looks great. I think it's, you know, the tint, uh, the, the color match, it looks really good. And once the paint has come around and ended up, you know, poly in the beam, you, you're never going to know there's a crack there. And, the structural integrity of this exterior wall is going to be even better. So, um, just go ahead and take the tape off and see how it looks. Absolutely. Now, as you can see here, like there's a couple parts on on this beam where um, it's a natural wood, and it almost it almost blends identical with the tin I've used. And um, if you plan on poly in your beam or, or whatnot to see what it's going to be like, you can actually take some water and actually rub it on, and that's actually what it's going to look like with the actual poly. So as you can see, it's pretty identical. Uh, what do you think about it, Andy? Yeah, I think it looks fantastic. I mean, like you said, we're we're just doing a straight poly in here. We're not we're not staining the beam, um, and, and it being so rustic looking. After you apply the, the the actual poly itself, it's it's really going to match. And once the poly goes over the stain itself, it's even going to darken it up a little bit. So the crack will be irrelevant at that point, and it's really just going to blend in and give the good look of the of the bond. So I'm I'm happy with everything. All right, so that's our five step process, and um, I don't know. I think it looks pretty good. What do you think? I think it looks great, Dan. Uh, I appreciate you giving the demonstration. Uh, this concludes, you know, uh, the, the tint process uh, of this particular beam. We're going to go around and, and give you a little glimpse on uh, some of the other beam work that we've done around the barn, and uh, hopefully, you know, we give you good ideas on what to do next. Mm -hmm.